Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Mohammad Tahir. In the previous video, we discussed the procedure for direct design method. And while discussing the procedure for direct design method for the distribution of exterior negative movement to the column strip, we encountered with one factor beta t. So that beta t was involved to select the movement coefficient for column strip in case of exterior negative movement. In the previous video, I left this point to discuss later. So in this video, we are going to discuss what is this beta t and how we can calculate it. This beta t is the ratio of torsional stiffness of edge beam section to the flexural stiffness of a width of slab equal to the span length of torsional edge beam. So this beta t is the ratio of torsional stiffness of edge beam to the flexural stiffness of slab having length equal to that of beam for which we are calculating the torsional stiffness ratio. So in ACI code, a equation is given 8.10.5.2a to calculate this factor beta t. So beta t is equal to ECB into C over 2 ECS IS. So in the numerator this EC and C, so the product of these two is torsional stiffness of beam and in denominator ECS and IS is the flexural stiffness of slab. So in this equation, we are already familiar with these three factors, but this factor C is new to us. So this factor C is torsional stiffness constant. So this torsional stiffness constant equation is given in ACI code 8.10.5.2b. So we can calculate this torsional stiffness constant based on this equation. So our edge beam can be in two shapes either in L shape or in T shape. If there is no shade beyond the beam or beyond the columns, in that case the section of edge beam will be L and if there is a projection beyond the center line of the column or beyond the edge of the column, so in that case the section of the beam will be T beam. For example, if this is the column line and we have beam over here like this. but the slab is projected beyond the face of the column. So in that case, if we draw the section over here, so the section of this beam will be somewhat like this. So this portion is actually the projection beyond the face of the column or edge of the beam. So in that case, the section of beam will be a T section. Okay, and if we have the scenario like this, column, column and beam over here, but the slab is not projected beyond this face of the column, it is up to the face of the column, in that case the section will be like this. So here the beam will be continuous in this direction. So this one will be the beam section. So this is L section and in the previous case it was a T section. Okay. So the dimension of L section and T section can be estimated by considering the specification given in section 8.4 just as shown in these two figures and we have discussed these two figures in the previous section while calculating the flexural stiffness of beam. 
So here HB is the surface to surface distance between slab and beam and this projection or the part of the slab that is considered as the part of beam is HB R 4 times HF the smaller of these two values and in case of T beam so it will be BW width of beam plus 2 times HB or BW plus 8 times HF smaller of these two values so we can consider the section of HB based on specifications given in 8.4.1.8 of ACI code ok once we have the section then we can calculate this factor C by dividing this section into smaller or separate rectangular parts so for example we have a L section so we can divide that section into two manners so figure 1 and figure 2 so this is case 1 and here figure 1 and figure 2 this is case 2 so in either case we can divide this figure into two different figures so figure 1 and figure 2 figure 1 and figure 2 first case and second case so after dividing this figure into separate rectangular parts we can calculate this factor C for each figure for each smaller part and then we would need to sum these the values of C for this figure and for this figure figure 1 and figure 2 and we need to repeat this procedure for both the cases and we will select the larger value out of these two cases and here in these figures for example figure 1 the dimension the smaller dimension will be termed as x and the larger dimension will be termed as y so here the smaller x and y it is not in x and y axis direction rather it is so rather it is smaller and larger dimensions so x is the smaller dimension y is the larger dimension and c will be <coughs> greater of these two cases ok let's solve one example to show to show how we can calculate this beta t so here we have a slab system in which we have edge beam with a section 12 inch by 16 inch and one span of 20 feet by 21 feet and the other span 18 feet by 21 feet and the thickness of slab is 8 inches and we need to consider or we need to calculate the beta t factor for this frame BE so for this frame this beam will be the edge beam so we need to calculate the torsional stiffness ratio for this edge beam ok so to calculate the torsional stiffness ratio beta t we need two factors C and IS E B and E S are actually the material properties and for monolithic construction of beam and slab so this will be same so this will be cancelled out so we need these two factors C and IS so first let's calculate C to calculate C first we need to select the dimensions of the section for edge beam in our case we have uh, beam edge beam like a L section so the width of beam is 12 inches and overall height is 16 inches the thickness of slab is 8 inches and this distance from the bottom of the slab up to the bottom of beam it is also 8 inches so this projection or this part will be smaller of 8 or 4 times of 8 so the smaller will be 8 HB 
So this will be the section of edge beam. So now we need to divide this section into two different parts. So either we can divide it like this or the second way is to divide it like this. So figure 1, figure 2 and figure 1 and figure 2. So the dimension here will be 8 and this one will become 12 plus 8, 20 and this one 8 and 12. So once we have divided this figure into rectangles, so now we can calculate the factor C. So the C factor is actually the sum of C for this figure 1 and for this figure 2 which is equal to C1 plus C2 we can call it like this. So it is equal to 1 minus 0 0.63 times for figure 1 it is x is 8 and y is also 8 multiplied by 8 cube into 8 divided by 3. So this is for C1 plus for this figure 2 it will be 1 minus 0 0.63 into the smaller dimension is 12 divided by 16 y into 12 cube into 16 divided by 3. So after calculating this we can cal get the value of C. So we will need to calculate this value C for case 1 and for case 2. So let's see what's the value. So in case of first figure we have distributed it like this 8 inch and 8 inch for figure 1 and for figure 2 it is 12 inch and 16 inch. So 1 minus 0 0.63 12 over 16 12 cube 16 3 plus for second figure this one 8 by 8 and 8 cube. So the value is 5 3 6 7 inch e power 4. Okay so in case of second figure or second case the value of c comes out to be 3741. So if we compare these two values so the larger value is 5367. So the larger value of C will be considered as the torsional constant. Okay. Now the next is we need to calculate the flexural stiffness of slab. So for flexural sti stiffness of slab we need second moment of inertia of slab. So to calculate the second moment of inertia of slab we need to decide its section its width B and its thickness. So thickness is already known 8 inches. So what will be its B width? So it is actually the width equal to the span of this edge beam. So the span of edge beam is 19 inch. Average of this, these two spans. So here the span is 21 feet. So half of it will be sorry 20 feet. Half of it will be it will be 10 feet and here it is 18 feet that will be 9. So the sum of these two will become 19 feet. So the average value of these two panel spans will be 19 feet. So 19 into 12. So this will be in inches. So now we have B as well as H. So once we have B and H then we can calculate this IS. So as in this case beam and slab both are made with the concrete having same elastic modulus so ECB and ES will be cancelled out and the remaining equation will become C divided by 2 times IS so C5367 times 2 multiplied by this IS9728 so this beta T will become 0 0.276 so in this way we can calculate this beta t. So once we have the value of this beta t, we will use that value to calculate or to select the coefficients 
for the moment distribution of exterior negative moment to the column strip.